Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Garden Soil series. Last time, we began to discuss the nutrient cycle in the garden. As a part of this discussion, we spoke of the 18 elements plants require to live. On today's episode, we're going to dive deeper into the nutrient cycle and what us humans need to get out of it. Through an elimination study, universities were able to determine plants only require 18 elements in a bioavailable form for optimal growth. Humans are not as lucky as plants. We humans require the 18 elements plants do, plus another 8 for a total of 26 of the roughly 98 elements. The 26 elements were picked up on a variety of biochemical survey methods, however some of their relationships are not well understood. The essential elements we need to survive can be broken down into a number of categories. Vitamins, dietary minerals, essential fatty acids, and essential amino acids. For the purposes of this episode, we are going to focus on the dietary minerals as vitamins, fatty acids, and amino acids are produced by either our plants or other food sources, and healthy soil should be able to accommodate their development if vegetables and fruits are their source. Some of them come from other sources outside of the garden. A full list of vitamins, amino acids, and fatty acids can be found in the description below. Dietary minerals are the chemical elements required by living organisms with the exception of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen that are present in organic molecules. These minerals are not actually minerals, rather chemical elements we require in a form we can take up or use, or in a bioavailable form. Most of these elements are relatively common on land, in healthy ecosystems. One of the most well-known elements that plants don't need, that we do, is sodium, a main component of table salt. Both sodium and iodine are less common on land, however typically found in other dietary sources. Plants won't let us down though. Although they do not need some of these elements, plants are able to absorb them through the roots and incorporate them in the crops we harvest and eat. In order to make the minerals bioavailable, beneficial bacteria play a key role in converting them from the parent material. Nutrition is important, and it's better when ripe. For example, a recent study on green and red sweet bell peppers showed an increase of trace elements when the pepper is allowed to ripen. In order to make sure the soil is healthy and can provide both the 18 elements plants need and the additional 8 we do, a few simple cost-effective tricks can help the soil food web and nutrient cycle. Mulch, compost, and actively aerated compost teas are some of the pillars I use to do this in my garden. If you would like more information on this, please feel free to click the link to episode 4 in this series, The Nutrient Cycle. Elemental uptake can be a negative thing as well. Although we require 26 elements, some of them, when in high enough concentrations, can become toxic. Alternately, plants can take up elements we don't need and can become toxic when the concentrations increase. The Garden Soil series is intended to not only show you how to organically improve your soil, but to understand some of the implications our choices have on the food we eat. Over the next few episodes, we're going to start to talk about the different common chemicals and additives that we are using in our gardens and their implications. If you have missed any of the previous episodes and would like to catch up, click on the link to see the playlist. Thank you for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much. I hope you have a fantastic day.